Hello everybody, in this video I'm gonna be talking about crowd psychology and the dangers of the collective mind. How are individuals influenced by crowd consciousness and what are the signs of groupthink? Most people are influenced in some way or another by the crowd, by the herd, by that collective mind. So I'm gonna try and unpack all of that here. So let's start off with a quote. Here is yet another important consideration for helping us to understand the individual in a group. Moreover, by the mere fact that he forms part of an organized group, a man descends several rungs in the ladder of civilization. Isolated, he may be a cultivated individual. In a crowd, he is a barbarian. And that was by Sigmund Freud, the 20th century psychologist. In this video, I'm also going to be referencing the work of Gustave Le Bon quite a lot. He was the author of uh, The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind, which I believe was the uh, 19th century that book was written. His work in particular heavily influenced people like Adolf Hitler, Vladimir Lenin, uh, Mussolini in Italy, many communist and fascist dictators of the 20th century. Also people uh, like Edward Bernays, uh, I believe he was Sigmund Freud's nephew, I think, and uh, he was heavily influenced by Gustave Le Bon in terms of uh, propaganda, how you can get people to think a certain way, how you can manipulate man's lower natures in order to sell to them, right? We see that all over the place today. Sex, if you, if you put sex in front of people, you, generally speaking, you get far more sales by sexualizing that product than you would by not sexualizing the product, as an example. Uh, so, that type of work, that type of study of the collective mind heavily influenced the marketing industry as we know it today as well. When we get a grasp of the mechanics of, of crowd psychology, it's like with a knife, so you can either use that for good or bad. Right? You can either, with a knife, you can either create a nice meal for your family or you can kill somebody, right? And that's the same with crowd psychology, so both positive and negative purposes. Lenin created gulags, for example, whereas uh, people like uh, Wilfred Bion, who were heavily influenced by Gustave Le Bon as well, he went on to become the president of the Psychoanalyst Society in the UK. So, obviously, with anything in life, you can have a positive and a negative by understanding what's going on here. I know of coaches and mentors and everything who use uh, collective and uh, crowd consciousness techniques in order to create the good in people. So, of course, uh, you know, coaches and mentors, generally speaking, do a very good job. Whereas uh, dictators and people who get to the, the high levels, high positions in, in politics, generally speaking, are psychopathic in their, in their natures. Uh, and they use this for, for the negative in general terms. So, so once again, please have this in mind as we go through uh, the video, okay? So according to Gustave Le Bon, there were three key processes of the psychological crowd, right? So the first one was anonymity. Basically saying that the individual is hidden in the herd. So where before they'd have full responsibility of their actions uh, for their desired outcome, in the crowd, in a big herd of people, in the collective mind, they don't need to take any responsibility for themselves. They become anonymous because the crowd is essentially the individual entity at this point. The smaller individual, therefore, doesn't need to take any responsibility for their actions. So that's the first key process that Gustave Le Bon created in his work. The second one was contagion. This is basically a contagious influence. There's a hypnotic state, like a field of energy, if you like, that manipulates the crowd. Um, if you can imagine a virus, funnily enough, a virus to uh, infect the, the, the individuals in there, to, to create a collective mind, that once again can be used for good or bad. But generally speaking, in the, in the words of Gustave Le Bon, in the terms of his work, it's generally for a negative impact because the individual loses that individuality, that there's no individual left per se because that virus, that collective virus, has a group think uh, mentality. There's no... Uh, individuality left in the person to, to take responsibility for their own actions, to think rationally. They'll lose all sense of rationality at this point because the contagion has infected the mind, okay? And number three 
was suggestibility. So this is the mechanism for which the contagion uh, takes place. So we have, uh, let's look at Adolf Hitler, for example. The people of uh, Nazi Germany went through incredibly hard times before Hitler got into power. And Hitler was one of the crowd, right? If you read Mein Kampf, if you can get your, your hands on that, you'll realize uh, he wanted to create a, a, a movement of people and one group, one collective, and he was the leader of that collective. He was a strong uh, voice, a strong opinion in there that could lead that contagion throughout the group. So suggestibility is that uh, the mechanism for which the contagion can take place. Um, obviously, the radical leadership of the 20th century, you have uh, uh, the, the, the communist uh, USSR and things like that, and uh, as we've mentioned already, Mussolini and uh, Adolf Hitler with Nazi Germany. The radical leadership regimes there uh, can be put down to this phenomenon. They can be put down to um, suggestibility and the contagion theories. And a quote by Gustav Le Bon himself, an individual in a crowd is a grain of sand amid other grains of sand, which the wind stirs up at will. So if you use the wind there as, a, as the suggestible uh, entity within the group, and you use the, the grain of sand as the individual, mixed in with all the other grains of sand as the collective, with the wind being the uh, suggestible and the contagion pattern within there, that is influencing the, the, the individual pieces of sand that lose all sense of rationality. They can't do anything about it at that point because they've been hooked by this virus, right? So let me share a few of my thoughts on this. I think that the collective mind is a, is a comfort blanket for the average person. Uh, the average person, as we can see throughout the world today, doesn't really like to take responsibility for themselves. They like to be a victim to circumstance. And I think that the collective, the herd, is where people can uh, wrap themselves up in cotton wool. Uh, if you like, it's a, it's a symbolic womb. Uh, I think I read that in the work of Michael Tazarian, I think. And if you can imagine the, the, the fetus that is in the, the, the womb of the mother, it's always nurtured and it's always being took care of, right? And I think that being birthed out of that, you lose automatically, naturally, you lose that, uh, that nurturing state, right? Now, I think that the collective mind, the herd, allows the individual to go back into that symbolic womb and be uh, cradled, if you like. You know, you're safe and you're nurtured. You don't need to take responsibility for yourself because the crowd and, and the mother, the, the metaphoric mother, the symbolic mother, will take care of that for you. So I think that that's, a, that's a, Michael Desarian used that perfectly in saying that the, the, the collective mind is a symbolic womb. Now, as we've said with su suggestibility there, people can be easily mind controlled using basic, very basic patterns of, of suggestibility. If people have no individuality left, if they don't know how to think anymore, then nefarious uh, agendas can easily weasel their way into, into people's psychologies. And Western civilization right now, in my opinion, is on the way to self-annihilation. It's on the way to, uh, it's been completely manipulated to detest itself, to, to hate everything that it stands for and to hate its history. Now I think that that's a collective mind virus that's going on right now. And if you stand up to that for any reason, you notice that the, uh, the, the people within the collective herd don't like people to rise above it. They don't like people to stand outside of it and say, this isn't correct. You'll notice how they, they shoot arrows at you. So they'll label you right now in the world, they'll label you uh, uh, racist or just using these buzzwords that's going on at the moment, which is just another collective idea. They'll go a fascist or you're a racist or a misogynist or all these words that are being thrown out at the moment. They don't mean anything anymore. They've lost all you know sense of, of power. They, they've all gone just because they're being overused by people who cannot stand other people thinking differently to the group, differently to the collective. Now, is this a nefarious agenda? I'd probably say that there, uh, there is definitely something to that. There are people, um, organizations, entities, that want civilization to move in a certain direction. 
and uh, they are controlling the patterns of people's thinking. And that is merely because they know how the collective mind works. They know how crowd consciousness grasps onto other uh, people in the same patterns of thinking. But the crowd itself isn't interested in the individual, isn't interested in mastery. It isn't interested in being great. It's interested in being safe and secure. Now, if we notice what's going on these last 12, 18 months around, uh, I'm not going to use the word because I'll probably be uh, shadow banned or something on YouTube, but over the last 12 or 18 months or so, the number one agenda has been safety and security, keeping everybody safe. Now, there's a lot of people out there who don't want other people to keep them safe. They'll keep themselves safe. The individual will take care of themselves and their loved ones and their communities if, if they will that way. But notice the collective is all about safety. So you go back to that collective womb again, the, the symbolic mother's womb. Why do we need to be kept safe by people? Is that merely a, an idea of the collective? Is it an idea of crowd consciousness that is taking away and stripping the freedom and liberties in order to remain uh, part of the group? And I think that's where we've got to today in the last 12, 18 months, and I think it's going to get worse over time. But that's probably beyond the scope of this. Um, the people who are in this, this collective crowd, they lack a sense of authenticity. They don't know who they are because the group has given them their identity. If you ask people who are, are so ingrained in, in an idea that has been planted in there, what they actually stand for, you'll find out that they don't have any idea what they stand for. They don't know what they're doing in reality. They're just, uh, they're repeating words that they've heard. And this is another mind control technique. So all these organizations that have come out of the, the, the woodwork over the last uh, two years or so, and longer in all fairness, but in particular it's shined a light on it in these last two couple of years, a lot of people who are following them don't know where they originated from. They don't know who's founded the organizations. All they know is the buzzwords that's been shouted out into the collective. Once again, in my opinion, it's a virus. And this virus is infecting people who cannot think for themselves. And this is what the collective mind and Gustav Le Bon's work is all about, is that the people's individuality uh, is completely destroyed. They don't exist anymore. All that exists is, is one collective idea that's just if you imagine a, a load of um, you know like fish in the ocean a school of fish and they move automatically on their own well that is uh, symbolic in my opinion of the the human race right now that wherever uh, certain organizations and governments and, and people around governments want civilization to go they will plant things in the minds of people and anybody who does not know how to exit the crowd, they will be influenced by these people and by these ideas, by these words. And this is why uh, the world is radically inauthentic at the moment. Social media, all you ever see is good things. You don't see anything of, of the reality of people's lives. All you see is uh, you know, nice holidays, nice cars and whatever else, which causes what's labeled as mental health problems in other people. All it is is inauthenticity, breeding inauthenticity. I did write an ebook on uh, uh, on how to become an authentic individual. You can check that out on my website, alexhitman.co.uk. I'll put the link in the description below. So check that out. And I'd like to uh, quote here Krishnamurti, Jiddu Krishnamurti. Uh, it's quite a well-known quote. He said, it is no foundation of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. Now a sick society right now to me is Western civilization and the, the uh, global collective mind that we've got going on at the moment who cannot think for themselves, they have no individuality, no uh, you know, mastery over themselves and, and over their surroundings. They don't wanna interact with life at all. All they wanna do is be safe and secure. Well, for a lot of people out there, and a massively growing movement, they'd rather be dead than follow these, uh, you know, the herd at the moment. They'd rather be uh, in a box under the ground or, or wherever you perceive yourself to be when you pass away. 
than following the dictates of people who have no real sense of, uh, of goodness in their life and all they want to do is manipulate people. So how do we move beyond the collective mind? How do we move beyond the, the, the group think that is absolutely manipulating everything in the world today? Uh, the answer is pretty simple. It's, it's spiritual expansion. Now, I don't use that word loosely or very fluffy, but you seem to get uh, like an immune system, a spiritual immune system that can just smell out conformity and it smells out bullshit. The less influence you are by crowd psychology, the less the crowd can influence you because you have these individualistic barriers up and you know within yourself what feels uh, right and what feels good. And uh, you don't need to listen to other people to dictate your life. You've got your own dictator that sits in here. You don't need to listen to uh, the leader, apparent leaders of the world to tell you how to keep safe. You can be safe right here, right now in your own being. So moving beyond the collective is a spiritual expansion. It's something that is individual to you. It's nothing that the church can give to you or reading books can give to you. It's an experience within yourself and you know that as you go through it, there's nothing anyone can say that makes this thing happen. There's nothing anybody can teach that can make it happen. It's your individual journey. Check out the work of Gustave Le Bon. Uh, he wrote The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind, along with uh, a few other books as well. Heavily influenced some of the biggest names of the 20th century, for the good and the bad. But uh, definitely worth picking up his books and studying them. Check out my website, alexhickman.co.uk, and also check out my Patreon, where I put uh, exclusive content on there as well. I'll see you later.